Namutase Bhagavatu Arhatu Samha Sambuddhase Namutase Bhagavatu Arhatu Samha Sambuddhase Namutase Bhagavatu Arhatu Samha Sambuddhase All right, so we will be continuing the chapter Kamatan, we went through part of the, can you see the screen everyone? Yes. Okay. We were going through this chart yesterday. Ante, you had to make it bigger. Yes. The chart. Right. Thank you. So we were going through the chart last during our last class, <clears throat> which we spoke about the specifically the development, right? And then of course a sign that appears as we progress. We found that certain meditation subjects do not cultivate any jhanas, or we cannot cultivate any jhanas. Why? The main reasons being the nature of the object being too ambiguous, right? Whilst other objects, such as the 10 kasinas, we are able to go all the way up until the fifth jhana, right? All the way up until the fifth jhana. So us being able to go or reach the fifth jhana, this would then lay foundation for the cultivation and development to continue from the Rupa Vachar to the Arupa Vachar as well, right? This is the foundation, mind you. However, what happens in the Arupa Vachar is we drop the Rupa Vachar. Remember? Right? So it is on this foundation. So up to the fifth jhana, the foundation for the reaching of the fifth jhana is the counterpart sign, right? Which progresses into every time that we progress along the jhanas, we come back to the counterpart sign, recontemplate, and then go into the second jhana, right? From the second jhana, when we are progressing into the third, we go back to the counterpart, find fault with the jhana, go back to the counterpart sign, drop another level, and go into the fourth jhana. Right when it comes to the fifth jhana, and when we do reach the fifth jhana, we drop the counterpart sign altogether. Right, that is how it becomes arupa vachara. The counterpart sign is what we drop completely entirely. The fact that, on the basis that having a counterpart sign or having dependence upon anything to do with rupa makes the subject or makes the jhana weak. Hence, we drop the rupa entirely. That is what or how we reach the arupa stages, right? Now, now, um, we went through the foulness, which only reaches the first jhana, right? Which only reaches the first, first jhana. We went through the recollections where we have no jhanas, where we have no jhanas, right? All the way up until death, we will have no jhana, too ambiguous of uh, a recollection, right? Now, body and breathing, the body meditation can go up to the first jhana. The breathing meditation can go from the first to the fifth jhana. Right. Hence, also why the Buddha regards um, anapanasati in such high esteem, being the fact that it is such a useful meditation technique. Right. Now, now we come into today the illimitables, the four. Right. Loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, appreciative joy appreciative joy and equanimity. Loving kindness is good for the hateful, right? Compassion, same. 
appreciative joy, same. Equanimity, same. Now, hateful in the English language, as we are aware, is a very strong word, right? It is a very strong word. The Pali of this is dosa charita, right? Now, what when we have the Pali term dosa charita, dosa charita insinuates upon a character where or a personality trait where there is friction, right? So this uh, a character or a personality trait where by nature the person has friction right friction difficult difficulty to sort of go with abide with or not abide with but rather go with right there's always some sort of friction and not in a good way this is not the fact of asking questions or questioning something this is the fact of emotionally being or having that sense of emotional friction right that is regarded here as hateful right that is regarded here as hateful. Now, when we have, uh, for example, let us say a very, um, a very gross sense of hate, right? A very gross sense of hate. Such a person, when such a person is coming into meditation, now hate in the real sense of the word hate, right? When the hate or the dose is so strong, for such a person to come right into illimitables might be difficult, right? Might be difficult because this is directly sort of antagonizing his greatest fetter, hatred, right? Hatred. So for such beings or for such individuals, anapanasati, buddhanusati, thing, meditation session, meditation techniques which doesn't directly interfere with one's most core and integral uh, negatives comes in handy to smoothen the process of going into or reducing the hate that we are trying to sort of, in this case, cure. Is that understood in everyone, right? Is that understood? Because with the illimitables, what we find is that sometimes for a lot of people, when sometimes for a lot of people, when it comes to the illimitables, this can be quite a challenging, uh, quite a challenging aspect to pursue if those fetters are quite strong. So then that smoothing out process needs to happen. So loving kindness, Loving kindness, um, in the development, we have the preliminary, the acquired, right? And uh, the preliminary, the acquired, and the uh, absorption side. Apana, apana, right? All three. And then the sign to, it develops. Now, this we need to recognize something here right now loving kindness can be done in two ways and most people do the latter um, uh, do this most people practice loving kindness not for jhana but as an ancillary practice as a supporting practice and would i be correct in saying that everyone Right, a lot of people practice metta bhavana not for jhana specifically. Right, so if you're practicing metta jhana, not uh, I'm sorry, metta bhavana, not for the jhana, the way that we pursue the practice is different from the way that we would practice for jhana. Right, what is the difference? Metta for the sake of metta practice is very ambiguous, right? Siya, siya, loka vasi, siyalu sattva, nidukh vetva, nirogi vetva, sopat vetva. Very ambiguous. Do you understand, everyone? Is that clear? Very ambiguous. What does it mean in the sense of amb its ambiguity, right? The fact that we cannot make one sign the recipient of our attention. Do you understand, right? We cannot make one sign the recipient of our 
attention of the metta. That is why it's ambiguous, right? Let's go to death. Now we have death here, right? Death doesn't have jhana. Why? How do we contemplate death, everyone? Death is the, is the, uh, we, there are two types of death, kalamarna, kalamarna, right? Now, how do we contemplate, let's say, kalamarna, timely death, which is due to old age, right? It is contemplated through many factors. The fact of decay, the fact of aging, the fact of distancing or the or the or the deterioration of health in many ways death is contemplated do you see everyone right how death is ambiguous there right to reach or understand death we use many components however if we go to of course the kasinas kasin is one object one image that we are developing our attention or mindfulness on right one now in the foulness and the bloated then a question could arise when we say so right we can reach the first jhana only in the foulness and bloated right we can reach the first jhana only how so or how do we understand this level of ambiguity right it is from the fact that when we are looking at a bloated corpse, a bloated corpse in the Vishuddhimarga, the image would be properly explained. When we are looking or contemplating upon a bloated corpse, we only look at the fact of it being a bloated corpse. Do you understand? Right. Whilst there can be many things that are going on, right, the limbs, the arms, uh, the chest, the stomach, the face, there can be there can be different sort of ways that these are depicted. However, the bloated corpse is the only uh, sign that we look at and within the body or through the body. Do you understand? Right? When it comes to uh, discoloration, which is a second part, we do not look at the now at the at the time because it's it's a bloated corpse and then going into discoloration, the bloatedness is all also there, isn't it? Right? But what do we do? We do not look at the, we do not contemplate upon or focus ourselves upon the bloatedness. We specifically look at just the discoloration. However, the discoloration is observed being one aspect of the whole decaying corpse body. We only look at this aspect, but that aspect, it's weak in the sense of not being able to reach beyond the first jhana because that discoloration aspect is found through what? Through through daytime images that have been drawn together by the whole body. Right by the whole body. So you could imagine everyone with our chittaviti knowledge now. Just imagine how many chittavitis are running or have to run to put data with regarding with regarding or with regards to rather. I'm sorry, with regards to bloatedness, discoloration. Chittaviti kiya then duanno oni the a a dapte then avarshana karagan. Right. That is how it becomes weak. Everyone is that clear? Right. Now, <clears throat> now, if the same example can be drawn with the Buddha Anusati, right? Buddha Anusati, Swakato, Bhaganav, if we take Swakato, Swakato, the quality, Swakata has to be, or the value addition is given through many stories, aspect, learnings, teachings that we've heard, isn't it? Hence, we are not able to reach a sense of one-pointedness. Samadhi will arise. Samadhi a yam kisi tarma and samadhi a tirma. Eth me ka dhya ne ka Is that clear, everyone? Right? Because of the Buddha Sati, the hindrances can also be suppressed to a certain extent, everyone. Right? The hindrances can also be suppressed to a certain extent. 
right? But does not reach Jnana because it's far too ambiguous. Is that clear, right? Now, loving kindness all the way up until the fourth Jhana. Um, metta, Mudita, Karuna, all up to the fourth Jhana. Upeka can reach up until the fifth Jhana. Right? It may upeksha bhavana va upeksha, I'm sorry. Upeksha bhavana va we can't do it. Uh, we can't just begin to do it. We can't, you can't just start upeka bhavana from the get-go. Right? Upeka bhavana, we can go into upeka bhavana after having a seasoned practice. Right, we can come back to upeka bhavana, but we cannot start upeka bhavana from the get go. Why it is too subtle of an object, simply too subtle of an object. Right, some would even go to say that upeka bhavana should be come back to after a certain jhana has been reached. Yeah, is that clear? Clear, everyone. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, anyone? No questions? All right. Now, perception. Uh, food that's loathsome. This is Ahara Patikula Sanya. Now, Ahara Patikula Sanya, it says as intellectual, right? Ahara Patikula Sanya, as a, for the person who has an intellectual or is able to see, um, see through intellect or has the temperament of intellect, this meditation subject becomes something that can sort of help him profoundly in his practice, right? And it's easy to develop for such a person as well. Now, food that's food as loathsome, ahar particular sanya, we have the preliminary and the acquired sign, but does not go beyond that, right? And I'm sorry, development, not sign, development. And then the, as a sign, we have the patiba, uh, the, um, the preliminary, the learning sign, but no counterpart sign, right? Because we do not have a counterpart sign, what does that mean? It cannot progress into jhana, right? It cannot progress into jhana, right? Then we have the four elements, right? Then we have the four elements. Now, why we find perception, ahara patikul sanna, and dhatuman sikhara are both for intellectuals? Why the load of contemplation that is required for something of this sort, just like, uh, just like for samanam, I said samanam pasana, but then it was corrected. Uh, what was the word? Not someone for peace. The meditation of peace, everyone. The Pali word for meditation of peace. <laughs> Dil, you asked the question last time, remember? Uh, I said Samanu Samana Nupa. And then it's it's Upasamanu sati. All right. Upa, upasamanu sati. Upasamanu sati. Thank you. So in Upasamanu sati, Upasamanu sati, Ahara Patipul Sanya and Datu Mansikara. I mean, Datu Mansikara we can understand because we have learnt it uh, in detail um, to now. The intellectual attributes of that contempt of those contemplation types are very high, <clears throat> are very high, right? It is based upon intellectual, the ability of contemplating from intellectual aspect that we are able to progress on those um, meditation types, right? Now, one might imagine, Habante, how is that going to happen with uh, Upasamanos, uh, Upasamananos, Upasamananos, right? For, with the contemplation of peace. How that happens is peace, peace as a contemplation is attained or practice by the letting go of that which is gross. Does that make sense? 
what does that mean what that means is this or rather what what is that what is the practicality behind it the practicality behind peace is the fact of being able to attribute to the peace that is present at the missing of turmoil missingness of missing of grossness missing of turmoil missing of anything that frustrates or creates a emotional sense of weight when that is missing we have the sense of peace to be able to let go of the hard part and see to if we might say to peel the outer layer of the fruit and see what is inside requires a bit of intellect to divide those parts is that clear does that make sense no does anyone want to ask a question with regards to peace is that not clear but can you please explain it again thank you so with the contemplation of peace now let us say uh the contemplation of peace the contemplation of peace when we do not uh, okay okay let us say we do not have we do not have the stress or we do not have the 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 worry of a certain thing right now let us say at one point um you know um you have to take your kids to school or raise your kids right raise your kids okay that's a that's a apt example i think okay raise your own children your kids right but now you're taking care of grandchildren most of you right the fact that you're not raising you're not the main person raising the kids you don't you feel a sense of lightness in comparison to being or enjoying your grandchildren right because it's not your primary responsibility to raise the grandchildren but it was your responsibility to raise the kids now those two experience this might be correct for some this might be not so correct for some it's fine right however for for to be able to do divisively see between these two experiences do you understand the fact of not having the responsibility of raising a child has now now have maybe the kids are now grown up they are adults themselves now it's light on your head there is a sense of peace in not having that specific responsibility that peace is what is attributed to does that make sense right let us say you first lived in a very large house then as you sort of realize you know it's a lot of work you moved and downsized yourself to a more appropriately sized house now it is easy to take care of that house because it's smaller right being able to see the peace that is present in not having the burden of running or looking after and maintaining a large house and attributing to that peace that is present with you now does that make sense yes bante 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 it's peace of mind peace of mind yeah the it's peace of, of mind. mind peace of mind yeah yeah that's a common term we use yeah, to yeah, yeah. peace of mind yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay okay so peace of mind right is does that make sense everyone yes want to thank you for me yes thank you that sense now in that presence of peace at when you're contemplating or when you sort of realize ah yes my life is i have a feeling or oh, i have peace because i do not have this responsibility these responsibilities are not my own right 
all of these things. And that sense of experience of peace can be attributed to, right? But to do that, that falls under an intellectual, just as that and ahar uh, particle sanya, as well as the four elements, all come under those types of intellectual sort of C, right? C. So the four elements, <clears throat> the four elements does not lead to jhana because the four elements are seen through so many different ways, right? So many different ways. Then we have the immaterial states, infinite space, right? Infinite consciousness, nothingness, neither perception nor non-perception, right? All of which go far and beyond into the first, second, third, fourth jhana experiences, of which the uh, jhana, oh, jhananga, the 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 features, jhananga, jhananga is uh, uh, upekha and ekakata. Right, a carpet. Is that clear? Does anyone have any questions? Bante, can you explain what is um, four elements? Mm. Four elements, four elements, four elements, four elements. Okay. We are coming to it, Damsari. Shall okay. we look at that? Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, we went over Buddhanusati, Silanusati, right? Now we have Chaganusati, right? The recollection of generosity involves mindful reflection on the special qualities of generosity, right? Or the mindful reflection on the special qualities of generosity. The recollection of the Devas, right? Devanusati is practiced by mindfully considering the deities are born in such exalted states on account of their faith, morality, learning, generosity, and wisdom. I too possess these same qualities. This meditation subject is a term for mindfulness with the special qualities of one's own faith as its object and with the devas standing as witness, right? This is when we take, now this sort of, this sort of meditation is often practiced, not, is often practiced by seasoned individuals who have a sense of restrained in the hindrances, right? Because I mean, you could very well understand, you know, <laughs> If a normal person was to start saying, I too possess the same qualities, <laughs> it can be horrible, it can go horribly wrong very fast, right? So this is this is when through practice, when we reach a state of you know where we do not see things as through mana, man in dapin, right? Api, we start seeing them through the fact of cause and condition, or rather the fact of we do not, we, not that we also do not see, we, we see through cause and condition, but rather the hindrances are suppressed to a um, level which does not, which does not um, foolishly subscribe to the notion of I am higher and I am lower. lower. Do you understand? Not that we got rid of that. Not that we have got rid of mana. But we had the Dhammanusari Gati qualities of being within the Dhamma that the way that we are looking at it is not through ego. Do you understand? Yes, Dhamsari? No, no. I'm okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good. Um... That that Devanusati, in that Devanusati, we take Shatta, Sila, right? Faith learning, uh, faith morality learning, generosity and wisdom. And we sort of see 
these are qualities that the devas possess. Through practice, I too have these qualities. Right? I too have those qualities. We attribute to the aspect of those qualities to produce not mana, but strength. Strength to not transgress and fall. Do you understand? Etina gatitika api shaktya karaganama api nivran dharma thavayata patkarana. Exactly, everyone. Any questions? Yes, dear. I think what do you say? Like shakti is like confidence that you have developed a confidence without the mana. Uh, yes, yes, yes. A sense of confidence. A sense of now. If you had to put it into a, a way that we understand, when you are a person who everyone knows, a person of repute, right? Although you might want to do certain things, walk on the road, all of these things, but you will think, oh. No, this I can't do, right? In the same manner, these sorts of aspects of your life, now that might be because you are popular, people know you, people are mad at you, people want to talk to you all the time, it's annoying, all of these things maybe. But in this aspect of the meditation, similar to that, but now what are the qualities? You connect or identify your being or practice with faith, morality, learning, generosity, and wisdom that is present, right? So when that becomes fine or polished, what happens is that strength and confidence that is cultivated does not allow you to act in a manner or to perceive things in a manner or to behave in a manner that would sort of give way for the influences to arise. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah? That is a contemplation of Devanusati. <clears throat> then we have Upasamanusati. The, is a contemplation of the peaceful attributes of Nirvana. Now the peaceful attributes of Nirvana is not known to us human beings, uh, Pratujjana human beings. Because Nirvana is something, as the Buddha says, it's something up until you do actually experience it. It is not comprehensible by beings who are within the cycle of suffering or rather within the cycle of uh, hindrances, right, in the hamster wheel. So that is why we take hurry. When we experience jhana, we experience jhana at the letting go of something else, right? When we experience a sense of lightness, ape jivite prashan atihetuing, ape manasa boma samakami, because we have not wronged anyone, because we are not in debt, because we have not killed or plundered. Or our lives are free of those agonies that come to those who plunder and kill and steal. Isn't it, everyone? Right? Now, in that sense, now that is something that we can attribute. That is the explanation that is actually given in the Mahasunyata Sutra. Right, we will never know the emptiness that comes from nirvana up until we experience nirvana. Right, so it is not our task and duty to imagine and hallucinate about what nirvana would feel, which is such an unworldly experience. If I might use the word unworldly, it's super mundane, right? Super mundane. However, the Sunnita Sutra says, How do we then practice a sense of this? So, it is in training the mind to come into the realization that the missing of that grossness brings about that sense of peace and lightness. Sense of peace and lightness. Yeah, is that understood? Is that clear, everyone? Okay, right. Then comes death conscious, the recollection of death, Maranusati is a contemplation of the fact that one's own death is absolutely certain. Marnia Nitya. That the arrival of death is utterly uncertain. That the arrival of death, when we are going to die, we do not know. And that when death comes, one must relinquish everything. Right? That everything, we must let go, everything that we are holding on to, has to be let gone at a certain point because of death, right? And it does not ask for your permission. 
mindfulness occupied with the body is contemplation of the 32 repulsive parts of the body hairs of the head hairs of the body nails teeth skin flesh sinews bones marrow this is the um this is the um foulness of the body right foulness of the body mindfulness occupied by the body uh asuba bhavana right asuba bhavana uh the 32 parts meditation uh, 32 parts meditation Anapanasati is attentiveness to the touch of the sensation in in-breath and out-breath in the vicinity of the nostrils or the upper lip, wherever the air is felt striking as one breathes in and out. The illimitables, right? The four illimitables are so-called divine abodes, also called divine abodes, loving kindness, compassion, appreciative joy, and equanimity. The four illimitables. These states are called illimitables, apamanya, because they are to be radiated towards all beings without limit or obstruction. They are also called Brahma Viharas, divine abodes or sublime states, because they are the mental dwellings, mental dwellings of Brahma divinities, Brahma divinities in the Brahma world, right? In the Brahma world. Loving kindness is the wish for the welfare and happiness of all living beings. It helps to eliminate ill will. Karuna, compassion, is that which makes the heart quiver when others are subject to suffering. It is the wish to remove the suffering of others as it is opposed to cruelty. Sorry. <laughs> there was a Dhamma talk a long time ago um, where the, uh, where the, Deshika, uh, the monk said, uh, uh, compassion is where you think ane apoi when you see something bad happening, <laughs> right? But Aniyapu is not compassion, right? <laughs> right? Um, yes. So here, this sense of pity is not what compassion is, right? Yes, still. That sense of pity is not what compassion is. And pity, most often, the way that we experience pity can also come as a dosa mula. Right, as a dose of more to the circumstance. So, loving kindness and then karuna are two very, and then mudita, appreciative joy, is a quality of rejoicing at the success and prosperity of others. It is the congratulatory attitude, anung, a congratulatory attitude, and helps to eliminate envy and discontent over the success of others. This is when, this is the happiness that arises at the sight or the knowing of others' success and happiness. Right? That feeling. Um, now, let us take the occasion of something of this sort. Right? Uh, <clears throat> by the way, um, Saturday, Sunday meditation this time is very good. Uh, I will upload the session um, so you can follow the guided meditation. It was Indriya Bhavana together with uh, Metta at the end. So you can uh, use that meditation as well. I'll upload it. Now, loving kindness, Metta and the Mudita and Karuna, right? Now, when we contemplate upon or direct our attention towards, let us say, the beings living in woeful states, right? The beings living in woeful states. Now, sometimes the way that our imagination or the way that our attention works is quite, um, quite um, visual, 
right? So we can literally see the way that these beings are, right? In, of course, things that we've seen ourselves or the Dhamma that we've read, right? So now this is the loving kindness practice. In the loving kindness practice, for loving kindness to cultivate and develop, it has to only be loving kindness. But what happens? In the loving kindness, now let us say, through the loving kindness or during the loving kindness practice rather, this, this sense of pity can arise. Right? Which is not loving kindness. Do you understand everyone? Right? In the fact of knowing that there might be beings in this world or there are beings in the world just as it is quite a cold day. Right? In being a cold day, what happens? There might be people on the roads freezing. Right? The homeless people might be freezing on the roads. Right? Now, on that, now let us say this, we have a sense of disillusionment that might arise towards the world, right? Towards the world. But that disillusionment can arise out of Dhamma. That disillusionment can arise out of the fact of the poorness of the world as well, or the thought of the poverty of the world, right? The second, the latter, the second is not metta or does not come into Dhamma thought. Right, does not come into Dhamma thought. So when we practice, um, when we practice metta, it has to only be the metta. Right, metta is a wish for the welfare and happiness of all beings. Now let us say, um, if we are giving a dana, right, we give them a dana. Right, uh, let us say we we give some money for them to sort of you know, buy food or whatnot or to take care of themselves, they say, to take care of themselves, right? Then, then you seek, then you go further and you want to see the result of that, right? Now you crossed over from metta to another stream. Does that make sense? Right? That or the expectation of appreciative joy is not metta. Does, is that understood, everyone? Does that make sense? If we are expecting that appreciative joy, we are wishing, may this person be well and happy, is metta. Now we are expecting the wellness of this person to come about. That is mudita. Of course, as an experience, as an experience, to want to see it in our minds, to want to see it in our minds, to have that experience in our minds. Huh? That is mudita. But mudita and metta, if you are practicing metta, the mudita has no place there. It has to be metta. Do you understand? Yes, Dev. Bante, when you are wanting to see the poverty and when you feel like giving them something, isn't that more like... A Intention of chaganusat, the generosity, because mudita is when somebody has something more than you and you can genuinely appreciate that they have, you know, the car you don't have, or the money you don't have, their success, the job you wanted. Isn't that more what mudita is? But like if you see there's poverty and they don't and this intention that you know you like them well fed or have a roof about that head. That is, isn't that more like chagan, the feeling of the, I'm just thinking only about it. The, the, now, first of all, this is meditation, right? We are talking about meditation specifically, right? Because uh, during meditation, especially during the illimitables practices, we have, we, it might be very visual, mm -hmm. the practice. It's quite, it can be quite visual. Now, mm -hmm. in focusing upon the meditation, the metta, is basically like, let us say, distributing, let us say, distributing funds towards those who need it or those who are the recipients. And that is that. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. 
ඒ ක්‍රියාව තමයි අර මෛත්‍රී සිතින් කරන ක්‍රියාව තමයි ඒක right now compassion compassion if you are taking compassion when a being is going through something right when a being is going through something right let us say a friend of ours is speaking about her plight right the compassion that we have to simply listen to lend a ear right not even say anything but simply even just listen and just be there that sense of feel right that sense of feel right as a as a as a as a contemplation if we say it like this ma karana me siulu kuslan sansa dharma balen me satya ge dukha nati veva munita i'm sorry karma karma compassion karma මාමේ කරන කුසලාන සංස ධර්මයන්ගේ අනුභව බලේ මේ සත්වයාගේ මේ දුකේ මේ සත්ව මිදෙත්වා right that is karma now appreciative joy can be of course if a person has more can mm. also be now more in the sense of even let us say we are old that person is youthful can be that has more friends and family around has more carers and all of that right whatever it is if a person in any way is doing better or you know not better better is such a egotistical word not better is doing well for themselves is doing well for themselves is in a good position right that sense of appreciative joy ඒ ඒ මිනිස්යාගේ දැන් අපි සමාර වලට අපි දකින්නවා වෙන මිනිස්සෙක් වෙන කෙනෙක් භාව හොඳටම භාවනාවට කාලය යොදන that person does a lot of meditation puts a lot of energy and effort into meditation right in seeing that we are happy we are inspired right but as we see it there is a sense of happiness we are happy for that person right that is mudita that sense of mudita right that sense of mudita now let us say a person is getting sort of recognized for something that they've done for 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 effort that they have made and that person is getting recognized for it right in seeing that happening you have a sense of mudita you're joyful you're happy for that person you're happy at this sort of success that you're seeing in front of you is that clear everyone right but when we mix we might very likely be mixing loving kindness compassion and mudita together together that is unnecessary and also falters upon the practice the development that we can have with the practice right so if it is loving kindness then kemo visually we are imagine let's say covid let's say ukraine let's say russia whatever afghanistan whatever which is happening all across the world we take this as an object right we are vibrating these vibrations is this well wishes of loving kindness right to each and every person each and every person api denama it is like the sun gives us light the sun does not come to inquire what we do with the light do you understand right that inquiry what are you doing with the light i've given you that is a more uh, that is a more mudita sense if you even if it is good even if it is good it will fall under sense of mudita because you're trying to see the success there you might be happy about it right you might visualize a sick person you you radiating loving kindness towards a sick person and the sick person now becoming healthier imagining right imagining but that imagination of that person becoming healthier and you rejoicing in that that is mudita do you understand is that clear everyone so in metta the power which is actually very intricate there right we don't even realize if we don't really study about and go deep into it right 
metta then grows because you are not confused or this is not two different types of mentalities or two different types of practice. You're simply giving me sattva nidukvetva, nidukvetva, nidukvetva. Do you understand? Yeah. So that metta practice then, then grows. That mudita practice then grows. That karuna then grows. Is that clear, everyone? Any questions? <clears throat> No questions. Okay. Then we have equanimity. Equanimity as a divine abode is a state of mind that regards others with impartiality. Regards others with impartiality. Okay. Free from attachment and aversion. An impartial attitude is its chief characteristic. And it is opposed to favoritism and resentment, right? Favoritism and resentment. The near enemy of this is, of course, ego, where you consider yourself higher than everything else or you don't really care for people around you, right? Um, so when we sort of unseasoned minds, unseasoned practitioners, when they sort of go into trying to sort of depict a pick, they usually lie to themselves. Right. So we often find that Upeka is a practice that is not really um, taught by teachers to young practitioners, but rather only seasoned practitioners and hopefully practitioners with Upeka, because they are the only ones who can really see the difference between a Kilesa driven Upeka and a real Upeka that the Buddha is talking about, which is quite important. Right. Because impartiality, this word impartiality can be very dangerous. Right. Can be very dangerous. And this. Uh, when we try now start lying to ourselves on the fact of impartiality or trying to be impartial, right? Lying to ourselves, what we are cultivating is their dating, right? Right? We start masquerading, we start, we start lying to ourselves, we become cunning, we become all of those bad things that we uh, should not be in the Dhamma, right? And as the Buddha mentioned in the Daru Khandu Kumbhutra, that is where then the Aratuwe Tina Aratuama Kunwena Patanga no Yavastavi. Right? So this Upeka is a very, it has to be taken only to those people who truly understand it should approach the subject of Upeka, or else very easily you will start lying to yourself and you will become, you know, you will get enthralled in this big lie that you create. Yes, dear. But it's not about this when you were talking about. Metta, I heard yesterday, but I just wanted to check with you what you, you think of what you said. So when you do metta practice, we always, most people start with themselves and then they go out and like unseen and unseen and those were good and those were the enemies like that. Now there was somebody, so, so when you do the sharing of merit and the blessings, so in yeah, there are verses that you said with the goodness of my practice and when you share. So, so they say, now whom do you want to dedicate your practice? Now in the Sri Lankan temples, it's always they say Akasatta and they Tavata Dhammi and Idhammi Nato. But in other practices, they, they share it with everybody around like in the Mittana, Mittana Bhavana. And one of these very senior monks was saying that actually, now we say and for that it, if you in your metta and practice, now it becomes more ambiguous, so you can't go to the fifth jhana, that if you spread this metta to all beings, all sentient beings, and like then that it's it's very much better than you know you, you're sending metta to your friend who's sick or somebody else who's having a problem or something. But but it of course it becomes, as you mentioned, more ambiguous, and that's why you can't go up to the fifth jhana in those things. But, is there a thing like that so that whenever you're thinking that if you can think of all sentient beings that because finally the practice is oneness so therefore when you don't limit to just your friend who is sick or your mother or anybody else because we very often when they're in times of sickness in times of difficulty we, we radiate metta but we, what was told was always when you radiate I mean, people do the unseen, born, and to be born, and all. But to think of all sentient beings, and that way your metta practice becomes much more powerful. Yeah. But I realize it becomes more ambiguous, and you can't go. What can you say about that? 
Well, well, I would say what is I would say it truly depends on the time and place. I mean, what are you doing, right? Because I remember even at Park at the refectory, we used to have this big board with everyone, the devotees, or you know, even monks, parents, or sisters, brothers, relatives, whoever. If someone is sick, they will come and post a picture of that someone with the sickness and ailment and request metta, and the monks would genuinely look at this board and practice metta towards these people. Right, and there is a very strong when people with a high sense of uh, mental ability, uh, samadhi, metta, are or radiate energy towards you. There is for sure a definite effect upon you know that you have. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not to <coughs> <coughs> this is not to say this is not to say that we are doing it all the time, right? They not to say that we are doing it all the time. If you are practicing or your practice is about metta for jhana, then there is a specific way to do it. But it does not mean that you will not sort of think about your mother who is sick or your brother who is going through a difficult time or a friend's friend or friend's mother. You know what I mean? Right? So it really depends. It's not this or that. We can do both. But, you know, we can be sitting for a 30 minute or a one hour metta session where we are trying to cultivate and deepen our experiences and ability of practicing metta meditation, which will probably be for jhana. In that case, the way that we do it is different. But maybe before you're going to bed or you get up in the morning, you wish to sort of radiate metta towards a certain person. And then at that time, you do it in a different manner, right? Which is absolutely fine. You get what I mean? Thank you, Bhante. Yeah. So there is nothing wrong with it, you know, but if you are now, for example, if you are saying, if you are saying, if you are, if you are saying, if you are saying that, you know, just because of my metta practice, I will not go into sort of radiating metta towards a certain person. That is the most dhamma thing that you could possibly do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't say that. It was saying that you include, but always include. It didn't say one or the other. It yeah. said that most of the people, when they were, when they were told at the beginning of the session to, uh, to dedicate their practice, and most people, uh, not most, but half of them were dedicating their practice to their children or their friends or somebody whose husband was having terminal cancer, and they just said that. Others included all that and the, 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 was like in the Metta Bhavana, the, the, that, you know, like born and to be born and seen like that. And then included at the end all sentient beings as well. So it's not one or the other. And what was said that, it, of course, if there's a particular person who's like dying and very sick and that focused meditation, that's good that you did. But when you say all these people and the one and then include sentient beings that it it widens the practice that's all what was said not to do one or the other yeah but while most people will get will think um for my family or what but like in that karni mitta sutta so it's at the end like to and just to remember that but of course you'll be thinking if a person is sick everyone will focus on that and something because there is a focusing but to remember, like, you know, at the end, like, to be for all beings. That was what was said. So that's why I asked. Because we were talking about the ambiguity also, you know, that, it, the, the, that when something very diffuse, like the Buddha or something, or, you know, all beings, it's quite diffuse. So you can't go to the fifth hand. But on the other hand, they said that for the expansion of consciousness, that that was best, good to concentrate on the sick person. But then... In the tab, I could see a like that. That's why yeah. I asked. But, what... but, but remember, yes, but remember, Dil, um, yeah. in the jhana practice, we focus on one person. Huh? Uh, that's that, that's what I said because there they were not referring to jhana, the general method. That's what I wanted. So if yeah. you are doing on because you're talking about the ambiguous, so that's the what I wanted clarity from you. That because wasn't jhana a... practice. Jhana yeah. practice is we yeah. start with a person who is respected to a person who yeah. is beloved a kalyan yeah. a person who is yeah. uh, an unknown person and at last we do a person who yeah. is uh, a person who is disliked mm. right mm. And, and in all of these instances who mm. we take as object is one mm. person mm. 
Mm. Thank you, Bhante. Because that wasn't to people who were doing Abhidhamma, and that's what I noticed when you were talking about in this, what can no jhanas or, or first to four and five. So that wasn't touched upon. Thank you, Bhante. Thank oh, you very uh, much. Very clear. Uh, iPad, I think. Do you uh, have? Yeah. It's Padma. Now, I think I think you probably answered it because when I was looking at the Upekha, it says against um, free from the same of mind um, as uh, oh, there was something I want to ask you, but let, let me get my take a mind to that. It, it, it refers to others. I was just wondering. Uh, in this practice, you are not thinking of inanimate objects. You are only thinking of people. That's what you said just now. Is that correct? Um, you mean in the metta practice? Yeah, in this metta. Are we, are we talking about upeka now, though? Yeah, upeka. Yeah. Yeah, upeka. In upeka. Okay. Yeah. So, upeka in. So, upeka is the. Uh, ability of maintaining this sense of equanimity right yes that sense of equanimity can be towards animate and inanimate objects okay right okay. Mm -hmm. animate and inanimate objects yes. <clears throat> so it uh, so this sense of what is opaca then the opaca is where we do not get caught up in the dialogue presented and yeah. cultivate it further into those different other Vedanas which are which have a far more yeah. with a grasp on you. Yes. Right. So this sense of upeka is that. This upeka, yeah. the sense of upeka is a, is an emotional state where um is it right of me to call it an emotional state? Let's not call it an emotional state. We'll it is a sense where the mind simply does not get caught up, right? It is free from attachment and aversion. Yes, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right? yeah. Now, if a if a thing, if a thing which is out of the ordinary happens, mm -hmm. which is which is unusual happens, right? Right before your eyes. Yes. Um you know, that, that dialogue in the mind as to sort of clinging or refusing it, that part does not take place. Okay, yes. And it could be to both in anim animate and inanimate objects. Animate object. and inanimate. Okay. Thank you. And animate That's and what I want to say. Yeah. Right? Then, malak, right? Lassana mm. malak. We lassana malak. Mm. We don't get caught up in the flower. Okay. But not not that we will not not the fact that we break or sort of we take down the entire katha and lasana yes. right yeah not not so but we will not get caught up in it emotionally and tied to it do you get what i mean okay. yes yes thank you yeah thank you um uh, yes mala but dam said you might have to mute yourself or uh, I'm getting an echo. Can you maybe now speak, please? Mala, unmute yourself. Can't hear you. Cannot hear. Unmute. Sorry. Banti, um... It's about Asubha Bhavana. Yes. We have a tendency to look at our body with disgust. Yes. And in um, uh, sir, most of the sermons, the priest said this, Kunukaya. But I don't think we should look at our body with disgust because it's something which helps us. Because when we say saliva, kela, you think it's disgusting, but kela is something which helps with the digestion mm. and sweating, even the sweat. Mm. When you sweat, it gets rid of the high temperature. It, may, it cools your body. That's a function of the sweat. Mm. And we mustn't say um, uh, this disgusting body because every part of the body has got a function. Even with the uh, pittam or the bile helps with the fat digestion. Mm. Why should we look at the body with disgust? We have to respect the body. 
because without this body we can't uh, get marga pala we can't uh, so the uh, yes yes yeah. yes um in this sense so when we are talking about i think there's an echo <clears throat> well, um, so it's good. maybe just mute yourself all right mute i will mute it right. now when we take um the 32 meditations the 32 meditations there is gratitude is of utmost importance both to the nama and the rupa right nama and rupa and we see even in loving kindness communicating with ourselves with loving kindness is proven to go a long way the internal dialogue that we have when we know how to communicate with ourselves this strengthens the being right however the term um patikula right or rather this asuba right with the 32 parts of the body is directed towards a factor minna metana then apita yam kisi dekin wedak ganna puluwa yam kisi dekak apita upakara wenna puluwa e yam e yam kisi de kerehi apita anawashya alima kata gannawa nam e anawashya alimata thamai me asuba manasikara asuba sannaya wadanne anawashya alimata e kenne metana alenna deyak neha tamange anger nahavala balagana me anger ta karanna one kotta tika karanna e shaktiya laba denawa nan api right eeta eeta wada mena mekata alilla me mama 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 kiyala e gatiyata thamai api asuba bhavanawa karanne the 32 parts of meditation we contemplate to break off that unnecessary attachment that we have to this body not to sort of say that this body is useless or is disgusting but i think when we translate the pali to the english the words can be quite harsh for example like hate hate is a very harsh word right however dosa when we say dosa dosa has a different essence to it right so this sense of disgust this sense of disgust is in the sense of disillusionment towards the body right as a sensuous entity that is what we are we plan to do or we try to attempt to do through the 32 part of the body meditation right 32 part of the body it is you know some some person or some person might be very uh, some person might be very beneficial to us right this person helps us out a lot right but just because they are beneficial to us does not mean that we have to fool ourselves and say that this is the most perfect being in the whole planet right this person might be having their faults this person might be having their shortcomings just as their good side they might have a bad side right the ability to accept that may may kunu khaya natta me khaya apita kochchara upakara karata niwan dakinna me khaya badagat awashya unata me kunu khaya kerehi avidyaven alenika kal noyutu deyak karanna awashya naha it that is what we usually do it is to cut off that unnecessary bond that the 32 parts are practiced there okay does that make sense uh, what, what i think is buddha mentioned the 32 part of the body just to say that uh, there is nothing to gloat over but uh, these are the, your body is made up of what this 32 parts not to get attached to it but at the same time we shouldn't say disgusting body hmm. and repulsive body hmm. because it every part of the body serves a function Hmm. that's what i think and when i listen to the uh, sermons everybody says kunukaya and things yeah. which is disrespectful i think hmm. and and i think and i think with the amount of people with body dysmorphia nowadays i think it is very really important to be aware of that as well isn't it? right <laughs> with the people who reject their own bodies especially from a very young age i think yes maybe we have to sort of 
review the language that we use because it can be misinterpreted from what it is truly used for. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, right. that is why in one of the suttas it was said, no, when the when this was first told, the Buddha went and when he came back, there were half the number of monks. And he asked Ananda, why is this? And a lot of people went and self down themselves. Yeah. And then the Buddha quickly started doing Metta Bhavana. Yeah. So I think Mahalavachi says there is a point in those words. It's yeah. like hate. Yeah. I hate Mahindana Lanka, we have to make a little in the hand. Right? Lanka, we have <laughs> because because I think in these countries because we are open to these sort of states that of experience and emotion that goes through yes there can be a negative impact that has especially on uh, especially uh, not especially for for people you know because some people there is um, we have seen with certain practitioners when they start practicing after they start vomiting they start experiencing all sorts right irregular bowel movements vomiting uh, sickness fever when you go deep into asubhavana this starts happening right but then that is where you then learn to continue to practice with that sense of balance when we come into a sense of balance it is it is like this we are so used to operating in extremes either we like it or we don't right mentally coming into a place of balance is the hard and difficult challenge that we are posted Right. And 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 when we do come into that balance, then we realize, oh, this is what we are talking about. This is not to get, you know, um, to not fool ourselves. Right? That sense. But as we live, I mean, we get the point. Right. Thank you, Mala, for bringing that up. Thank you so much. Right. Now, <clears throat> Damse, do you want to say something? Yes, Bhante. Bhante, when it comes to equanimity, mm. in this particular case, you are talking about equanimity as a meditation object. Yeah. But in jhana, uh, you don't, uh, in the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana, you don't have equanimity. That's you won't come across equanimity. Mm. Only the fifth jhana, you have equanimity instead of cest and uh, uh, preeti and sukha. So, so uh, the on the uh, only during the fifth jhana you can take equanimity as an object yes. of meditation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, only at the fifth jhana. Fifth only at the fifth jhana. Yeah. Fifth yeah. Fifth okay. jhana can be effectively take. Equanimity as an object. Yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Now, moving on. One perception. Ahar patakula sanna eka sanna na. The one perception is a perception of loathsomeness in food. <laughs> now, that's another word. <laughs> Loathsome. <laughs> Mala, would you like to say something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, very heavy word, right? Very heavy word. The perception of the loathsomeness of food is a perception which arises through reflection upon the repulsive aspects of nutriment, such as the difficulty of searching for food, the repulsiveness of using it, and the digestive process excretion. Right in the Metta Sutra, um, you know, um, um, the Buddha, the Buddha in the Sutras does mention this with a great amount of strength, uh, or rather intensity, where the Buddha says, especially to monks, uh, food can be a great fetter, right? Because this is actually one of the only to a proper monk's life. This is the only allowable pleasure, right? Not uh, the fact that it is allowable, the fact that the Buddha refused to promulgate any rules against the consumption of food because everyone needs to eat, right? If 
a promulgation was made and people and monks had to starve themselves as a, on account of the fact that they had not been able to suppress their hindrances, the monks would have passed start through starvation. So the Buddha refused to promulgate such a rule. Anand even asked the Buddha to do so, but the Buddha swiftly refuses, right? The, the loathsomeness, Ahara Patipula Sanya, is, is one um, where here the Buddha also says to consume food as if a mother consuming the flesh of her only child in the desert. Remember the story, everyone? In the desert, right? The father and mother and a small infant child. And the father and mother to survive think, you know, who shall, you know, what shall we do? And the father and mother decide, you know, we can make another child and it is unlikely that our child will survive. So maybe, you know, and uh, the parents consume the child in the desert. And the Buddha goes on to explain that the mother consumed with great, great disgust. She had no pleasure, but simply ate to curb her hunger, to give the body energy. And the Buddha says, thus is the way that monks you should practice on the consumption of food, right? To have no pleasure. Mukhada, why? Because when all the other hindrances are suppressed, and when your life, your seal, your morality, the way that you speak, all of these things are fine-tuned and in perfect order. But the only thing that is anchoring you down to the Kamaloka is food. Right? And food being a process that is quite gross, it is also a very lowly human pleasure. The consumption. Devas and the high Brahmas do not consume food. Devas consume once in a while. And the Oja. <clears throat> Uh, ambrosia is consumed by the devas um, once in a while but they live off the happiness of life and the brahmas live off the happiness of samadhi or mental happiness right food is one of the most poor and the lowly pleasures available to humans um, and being so attached to the consumption of food uh, taste of food specifically can lead to us being sort of anchored down to the human realm, right? And being unable to let go of this strong attachment that we have to rasa tamha. That is why the Buddha emphasizes so much, so much the Buddha emphasizes on the fact of enjoying food. This is not something that a practitioner should delight in, right? that a practitioner should delight in. This is not to say that should, that this is to say that food should be consumed for its properties of support in the body, for the continuation of our life force in order that we can use that energy to commit towards the practice, right? Uh, and the Buddha is quite, um, Visibly, the Buddha was quite annoyed. Uh, I won't use the word annoyed, but he was disappointed in the fact that the Sangha was, remember when the Buddha went on retreat and he came out of the forest. The monks were having a chat and eating and, you know, ha having a gala time. Mm. And the Buddha was like, what is this? <laughs> and he turns around and he goes back into the forest. <laughs> You know, he's like, I can't deal with this nonsense. And he went back into the forest, right? Because what he saw, because what he saw is essentially, I mean, it's not that the monks are doing anything bad, but the thing was the monks were then, on the other hand, doing something completely and entirely wrong because they were enjoying, enjoying something that was donated to them uh, that would, in hope that it would enable them to attain Nibbana. So it was also the misuse of food that was donated, right? And so the Buddha in the Dhamma and for practitioners, the Buddha does talk about this with very serious regard, right? Very serious regard. Yeah, exactly, everyone. Any questions? Okay. Then we have the Chattu, Datu, Pavatthana. 
The analysis into the four elements involves contemplation of the body as compounded out of the four great essentials. The earth element as the manifested manifested in solid parts of the body, the water element in bodily fluids, the fire element in the body's heat, and the air element in the breath and vital currents. Damsari, this is the 32 meditations are divided into the four categories of the elements. Right? The four categories of the elements. This, although it does not go into vipassana, right? Now, vipassana would mean anicca, dukkha, anatma. If anicca, dukkha, anatma is not contemplated in the practice, it is not vipassana. Right? So then what is the one, one analysis of chatudatu vavatthana? Chatudatu vavatthana is where we observe the part or nature of the body categorized into patavi, apo, pejo, vai. Is that clear? That's it. Mitra anicca tavya balanit ne, dukkha tavya balanit ne, anatma tavya balanit ne, mitra. Mitra ne, a, 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 anga. Now, for example, saliva is water element. Skin is earth element. The organs are water element, uh, earth element, right? The fire within the stomach is the fire element, right? Now, in such cases, what we only attribute is their physical manifestation, not anything else. Is that clear? Yeah? Okay. So then we have the immaterial states. <clears throat> the immaterial states. The four immaterial states are the base are the base infinite space and so forth. Thus, in the exposition of calm, there are altogether 40 sub-objects of meditation. These are the objects of the four immaterial jhanas, the base of infinite space, the base of infinite consciousness, the base of nothingness, and the base of neither perception nor non-perception. Right? Neither perception nor non-perception. Vachaning baluama apita peenama Right? Look at it. The first one, the base of infinite space. Space, where did the space come from? The absence of the nimitta. Remember that, everyone? Now, the ab space, right? The limitation of there is space is space is three seen through its limitation, right? So, we take away space as well. What is there? Consciousness, right? Consciousness also has its limitations, right? Consciousness. We take away that sense of infinite sense of consciousness. Now what do we have there? Nothingness, right? Nothingness. How do we know nothingness? We go deeper. Then we go into that which perceives neither perception nor non-perception. Neva sanya, na sanya, right? Now, analysis of Suitability, Sapphire Beda. Yes, dear. Bhante, in this thing, now we know space is absence of nimitta. Is consciousness the same as awareness here? When you think there's just pure awareness, is that how, how do you experience oh. nimitta? You know, absence of nimitta, you know, there's a nimitta. How do you experience consciousness? Is it as aware, pure awareness or what? No, here we don't take awareness. Uh, we are we go beyond awareness and we see we see the energy of the consciousness itself. You actually see it, not yeah. just a, no, not, not the feeling, not, 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 not the, the pure feeling. awareness. You okay, it. you see it. You see it. Okay, thank you, Ben. No. You see it. Now, with respect to temperaments, the ten kinds of foulness and mindfulness of, occupied with the body. Meditation on the 32 parts are suitable for those of lustful, lustful temperament, foulness, mindfulness over the body. Meditation on the 32 parts are suitable for lustful temperament. The four illimitables and the four colored cousins are suitable for the hateful temperament. Mindfulness of breathing is suitable for those of a deluded and discursive temperament. Right? Uh, what is in, what is what is given through by deluded is the thing that at the day duck in the very come. Tibina day duck in the very come. 
right? The sense of delusion. The six recollections of the Buddha and so forth are suitable for those of a faithful temperament. Recollection of death, of peace, and perception of loathness in the food, and the analysis of the four elements are suitable for intellectual temperament. All of the remaining subjects of meditation are suitable for all temperaments. Of the kasinas, a wide one is suitable for one of the deluded temperament. And a small one is suitable for the discursal temperament. Now, what that means is of the kasinas, <clears throat> a deluded person, right? If a person is of a deluded, not deluded person, a person of deluded temperament, the cousin is larger, wider. Whilst vitarka charityatna, if the person's mind runs everywhere, what do you do? Reduce the size of the physical cousin. Right? Because if it is big, what happens is he will be looking everywhere at the cousin. Do you understand? That is why for the vitarka charitya, we reduce for the deluded, the deluded needs a Kasana, which is bigger, so that there is a sense of immersion into the object. Do you understand? Right? Herein, this is the analysis by way of suitability. Analysis by way of suitability. Now, that, yes, dear. Bhante, now discursive with Vitaka Charita. Is the deluded a Moho Charita? Moho Charita. Thank you, Here, Moha Charita, Vitaka Charita. Yeah, thank you, Vanda. Right? Moha Charita. Now, everyone, that is all for today. Okay? <laughs> right. I hope that you're, you are revising. I hope that you are revising your Sampi Yoga Sankara, everyone. Yeah? And <laughs> see, I have a big board as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's blurred <laughs> but so um so yeah so all right everybody. i'll see you on uh wednesday for the okay. session and this sunday this sunday we are not going to be having the meditation what we will be having is the beginner session so if anyone wants to join the beginner session um that is what we're having on sunday uh, so we will not be having the usual meditation on Sunday. Yes. Um, Bante, yes. You mentioned about the Saturday's meditation. We are not doing meditation on Saturdays. It's oh, only on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Only Sunday. Yes, I thought I missed out something because Sunday. I missed something you mentioned. Okay. Thank you, Bante. Yeah. All right. Terran Sunday. Terran Sunday. Everyone's all right. Everyone's all right. Everyone's all right. Everyone's all right. Everyone's all right.